joining us on this virtual discovery day with the KU Natural History Museum. My name is Rachel Neff and I'm an entomology student here at the University of Kansas. What is entomology, you might ask? Well, it's the scientific study of insects. Now, because there are almost a million different kinds of insects known to humanity, many entomologists or insect scientists choose to focus their studies on a specific group. My lab and I focus on beetles, and I'm here today to teach you about a fascinating insect called the bombardier beetle and its incredible adaptation of chemical defense. Certain organisms or living things possess the secret weapon of chemical defense, which allows them to use repellent or toxic chemicals to fight off predators. Bombardier beetles are fairly small creatures reaching up to around the size of an almond, but they should definitely not be underestimated. These beetles use a form of chemical defense to shoot out violent bursts of smelly burning hot chemicals from their rear ends. These chemicals can scare predators into leaving the beetles alone or can even kill other insects. If you haven't figured it out yet, the scorching stink bombs released by this insect are what gives this feisty critter its name, the bombardier beetle. There isn't just one species or type of beetle that possesses this powerful adaptation though. There are more than 500 species of bombardier beetle across the globe, and we have more than 40 species of them here in the United States. They live in a wide variety of ecosystems, from deserts to forests to grasslands, where other animals live in fear of their blazing behinds. Since there are a wide range of bombardier beetle species, there is also some variation in how these chemicals are released from the beetles. They ooze out more slowly in some species, but can shoot out in rapid bursts in other species, with the liquid reaching up to 22 miles per hour and 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Certain species can shoot out over 700 chemical bursts per second, essentially creating a fast and furious set of explosions to harm their attackers. This defensive mechanism can even hurt humans sometimes, causing burns or stains to the skin. The famous biologist Charles Darwin even reported that one of them fired hot acid into his mouth once. Unaware of the bombardier beetle's secret weapon, he placed one between his teeth while reaching for another specimen to collect, which resulted in a nasty surprise for him, as you can imagine. Now, you might be wondering, how do these insects, which are only a couple centimeters in length, create these intensely explosive chemical reactions in their little bodies? Well, producing a burning hot chemical bomb inside your body is no simple task. These beetles have a complex network of chambers inside their abdomens to keep certain chemicals separate from each other so that the beetles can control when the chemicals react to cause an explosion. The two main components in this chemical reaction are called hydrogen peroxide and hydroquinone. Now on their own, these chemicals are not explosive. In fact, we find them in certain cleaning products and medicines. For the explosive reaction to take place, the beetle needs to combine these chemicals in its belly into another special chamber where the chemicals are mixed with something called a catalyst. A catalyst is something that speeds up or powers a chemical reaction. In this case, the fiery reaction that allows bombardier beetles to ward off predators. When the chemicals are all mixed together, oxygen, steam, heat, and irritating liquids called p-benzoquinones, are produced in a spray form that the beetles can aim at their attackers. Now, for our activity today, we're going to make our own bombardier beetles and cause a chemical reaction inside them to mimic the defensive explosions created by the real bombardier beetles. Inside your science kits, you'll find a test tube, googly eyes, pipe cleaners, and some pom-poms. Along with some glue, these are the first things that we'll use to create some beautiful bombardier beetles. So the first step in our project is going to be putting the legs onto our beetle bodies. Our test tubes are representing the beetle bodies and we'll use three pipe cleaners to create six legs because all insects have six legs. As you can see, I already used a pink and yellow pipe cleaner to put some legs on my beetle. and I'm going to finish her off with a green pair of front legs. The closed end of the test tube is going to be the front of our beetle, and the open end is going to be the back end of our beetle, since the chemical reactions are supposed to spill out of the beetle's hiney. <laughs> so to add a pair of legs to your beetle, you just take the test tube and place the pipe cleaner underneath it. 
You're then going to wrap the pipe cleaner around to the top of the beetle, twist tie the ends together like this, and then you can bend them like so if you want to give the beetle some joints, almost like knees, sort of. Once you have the legs on your beetle, you're going to take some Elmer's glue or any glue of your choice, really, and put two dots on the front of your beetle. Let the glue become sticky by waiting a few seconds and then add on your beetle's googly eyes. Once the eyes are on, you can glue on some pom-poms that we have provided and decorate your beetle however you wish. Get creative with it. Once you're happy with how your beetle is looking, you'll want to let the glued on parts dry for about 30 minutes before we do our chemical reaction. Feel free to pause the video once you're at this step and just come back after 30 minutes. Welcome back. Now that we've allowed our glue to dry, we can get our chemical reaction going. We won't actually be using hydrogen peroxide or hydroquinone, but instead doing a safe version of the reaction with baking soda and vinegar. So for this part of the project, you're going to wanna to have your pipette, baking soda, vinegar, spoon, and you'll also wanna grab a funnel. If you don't have a funnel on hand, you can make one out of paper by bending two ends of the paper towards each other and taping them together. You'll also want to make sure you're either using a bin to contain your chemical reaction or doing it somewhere that you don't mind getting wet. So once you have all of your supplies, you're going to aim your funnel into the beetle's rear end, the open side of the tube, and spoon some baking soda into it until it's about one third full. You can then grab your pipette, this thing, and suck up some vinegar into it. Then, with the open back end of the tube pointing away from your face, you'll want to squirt the vinegar into the beetle's abdomen, or the back end, and voila, our beetle is bombardeering and our chemical reaction is happening. Now, how can we tell that a chemical reaction has taken place? Well, we started with a solid, the baking soda, and a liquid, the vinegar. When we mix these two substances together, these foamy air bubbles start forming, which means the reaction is creating a gas, which is a new state of matter. You can also feel the test tube and tell that it feels cold to the touch. While the real bombardier beetle explosion creates heat, making it an exothermic reaction, this chemical reaction uses up or removes heat, causing an endothermic reaction and making our beetle feel cold. Feel free to keep adding baking soda and vinegar to the tube until you've used up one or both of your chemical reagents. You can then pour any contents from your tube down the drain of your sink. Thanks so much again for joining me today and I hope you enjoy learning about the amazing adaptation of chemical defense in bombardier beetles. The range of fascinating adaptations within insects is endless and there's always something new to discover. I hope you all have a nice day and until next time, stay curious.